Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Satham and welcome back to another video. Today, folks, I'm going to be showing you how to solo the Elephant King. Now, this is a boss and he spawns somewhere in the center of the map, obviously in the desert. Uh, he also spawns really close to the White Tiger. So if you folks enjoyed this video, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos. And why not? Check out some of my other videos here on this channel. Who knows? You might just enjoy them. Finally, for those interested, you can always find me on the Setopia Discord. The links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description, as well as in a pinned comment. So, now this is normally the trap that I tend to use. However, it is not really that efficient. Um, there is a way that we can do this, and I will cover that later in the video obviously you can try using this trap and kite him in obviously put a foundation if you can do that and then stack one on top now the problem with that is the elephant is quite big and you have to get around him which kind of causes trouble he does have some really uh annoying attacks uh so obviously not the best trap in the world but i do have one that actually works so with that said and done, this is the Elephant King. So you can see there's a difference in colors. Uh, also, I suggest that you clear out the NPCs or as many of the NPCs as you can before you engage in the fight. You don't want to have too many things going on. So he is slightly larger and he is of a gray shade rather than that dark color. He does have... a uh, Several attacks that are AoE based and do quite a lot of damage. Now, this is the trap that we're going to use. It is obviously made out of palisade walls and it is obviously designed in a circle. The idea behind it is you kite the creature and then obviously try and run between the palisade walls to the center and then get the elephant to pretty much run around the outer perimeter trying to get to you. Now, you need to try and place the palisade walls in such a manner that you do have gaps between them that will allow you to get in. However, it will not allow other creatures in such as tigers and other elephants. There is a possibility of those creatures spawning whilst you are doing this. So, obviously, I'm going to show you that I'm going to be doing this without any god mode or any of that stuff on. Uh, the way we're going to kite the elephant boss into the trap is by the use of a bow and arrow we want to keep as far away from him as possible and let him come to us so he's right there got his attention he's not really looking at me or considering okay he's coming now so i'm just gonna run behind the palisade walls now obviously the elephant may be able to damage the palisade walls the way we're gonna avoid him damaging the palisade walls is by being at the center of the trap that way the elephant wants to get to us but cannot get through the palisade walls and so therefore he will not perform any attacks until he is within range so as long as we stay out of his range or uh his ability to attack so he does have a range at which he will be able to attack as long as we stay out of that he will not perform any attacks and he will just try and get to us so all we're doing is getting him to rub against the palisade walls now one or two things can happen. He can stay there not doing anything, kind of like this. He can try and get to you when he does. He does take bleed damage. Obviously, this method will mean that you take quite a bit of time to take him down. You can also place down a foundation in the center. Uh, it will stop these um, bushes respawning, which is quite annoying. Now, we're going to keep shooting arrows at him until he faces us and decides to stop running around this can take a while but it is the safest way of doing this it is actually ridiculous so i'm gonna try and get close to him this is his attack that is his attack range obviously if he does hit the palisade walls and uh you do manage to take him down in the end do remember to repair them so all right he's now looking at me he should start taking damage if he's looking at you but not moving and not taking damage, just move to one side or the other until you get the bleed icon above his health bar. Then just wait there. So at the moment, he's focused on me. He should 
continuously re-aggro. However, there is a possibility that you will drop aggro and then want to walk away. So, I am going to use the bow and arrow to remind him that I'm here and that he wants to kill me. And so, this is basically all this involves. It's just keeping his attention on you. As you can see, he's trying to get to me, but I'm not in his range. So, you won't perform any attacks. Therefore, won't damage the palisade walls. Now, obviously, you can use a bow and arrow with poison on it to help the damage over time of the palisade walls. If you wish, I don't have that set up, but that is, of course, an option. Obviously, this is a fight that will take quite a long time, so it can take anywhere in between, let's say, 20 minutes to maybe an entire hour, depending on how the NPC is behaving. Sometimes... He will cooperate like he's done here. Other times it will want to walk away and you will need to constantly remind it. When he does focus on you and stay there, there's no point in really firing any arrows at him unless you have poison on them. They don't really do that much damage to him anyways. Alright, so back again. He has moved a tad bit, but he is stuck again. Uh, I've just been busy admiring the scenery and the hard work the devs have put in, I suppose. That's one of the things that you need to do. Also, very important here is, because this does take quite a decent amount of time, make sure that you have maybe a bedroll with you, or also food and plenty of water. That is quite important because you will need it. He is nearly dead. Uh, in the meantime, that elephant over there has spawned in. Now, obviously, I am behind the palisade wall, so that is... Uh, quite good for me because I am safe. I've also had a tiger try to get in but not manage because the tiger's hitbox is just slightly wider than the characters that you are playing. I kind of want to get that guy because he's going to cause problems. I mean, this one's nearly dead. That should do the trick. Hopefully. There we go. Perfect. Now, once you've taken him down, use whatever tool you wish to harvest him, and you will get a skeleton key. Okay, so I guess I'm going to wait for this one to die out due to the palisade walls. He's being a bit funky there, doing a bit of a funky dance. Um, so this is the basic plan for the trap. Obviously, you can improve on it if you want. Uh, this takes the least amount of resources uh, you can, for example, place, like I said before, a foundation in the center of the circle. It will stop the stupid bushes from respawning, which does kind of uh, make it a bit unpleasant. You can also put additional palisade walls between the cracks, uh, make it look like a sun-shaped sort of pattern that will help the elephant king snag. I will show you the design later on. Once I get rid of this guy. But I do want to harvest that key. But this guy is being a bit special. Obviously at the moment I am kind of short on the matter of patience. So I just want him dead. And he needs to die quite frankly <laughs> go on there you go just afraid of that uh, elephant king despawning to be fairly honest so I'm just gonna try and get my key before something happens to him there we go and there's the skeleton key The chest for the skeleton key is not far from this location either. Okay, so with the design that I was saying before, you can just place palisade walls sort of like this. So this should allow for enough room for us to get in and should also act as an obstacle for 
the Elephant King when he does try and go around. So he will snag onto the Palisade walls more often. Now, if you do this right and you stay towards the center of the trap, he should not hit the Palisade walls. If he does, do bear in mind, you might want to put maybe another layer of Palisade walls, either on the interior or exterior, just to be on the safe side. He does do quite a decent amount of damage. But if you do it right, you should not need it. So I'm going to show you this as well and how it's meant to work. I'll just place a couple down just so you guys get the general idea of the pattern and what I'm going for. So I should be able to fit between these. Obviously, I will take damage as I run. Okay, so now I'm going to pull the Elephant King once more and I'll show you what the difference is with regards to the new modification to the trap. I should be able to get in and out as you can see. I will obviously take some bleed damage just to show you that I don't have any of the stuff on like God mode or whatnot. So I can be killed. Oh, we've got a problem. And we've also aggroed the Elephant King. So... So now the Elephant King will want to go around the trap and find a way to get in. I'm just going to deal with this over there. So we haven't got any more ammo. We're running quite short. I forgot to restock. So obviously don't forget to do that. Make sure you have plenty of arrows. I probably recommend a stack or two of uh, arrows. It doesn't really matter what quality arrows. The whole idea is to use the arrows to gain the elephant aggro. Now, I might make a couple of silly mistakes here so you guys can see what I do and obviously hopefully you don't do that. He's refusing to move so I'm trying to get his attention. You can obviously try and go behind him to get him to turn around. If you do go from the front, he will use his attack if you are within range and may possibly damage the palisade walls. I'm just trying to get rid of this guy as well because he's a bit annoying. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. So that would be him attacking. There are other ways of getting his attention. Oh, that stupid bush. So that is his charge. Which he could not perform because obviously... I am behind the palisade walls. Just going to keep an eye on him, see what he's doing. Obviously, we want him to come towards us. If he does not have the bleed effect, just move to one side or the other until the bleed effect icon appears above his health bar. He's now being a bit derpy. So I'm trying to get him to look at me in such a way that... There we go, perfect. Where the bleed effect icon is constantly above his health bar. He is still trying to get to me, but not very successfully. As you can see, his health bar is draining slowly, so this will take some time. And with patience, you will get there. Obviously, I don't have very many arrows with me anymore, so I'm just going to take my time with this guy. Obviously, that'll mean having to think outside the box with regards to how I kite him around so that he gets stuck in the palisade walls. I guess I shouldn't have played with the arrows so many times. I just randomly shot arrows at him just because it was fun. Alright, he's nearly there. Not much more to go. It has taken about half an hour, but he has behaved this time around. He has moved a couple of times, but then he quickly got himself stuck again. So, very, very, very easy. He's now just sat there. He has been for the last 10 minutes. I'm just looking at him and... Uh, Waiting for him to completely die. He should be nearly dead now. Okay. Getting there. And that's him done. Obviously, once he's down get whatever tool you want harvest him and then get your key but it's that easy obviously my pickaxe broke so I'm gonna use a hatchet this time around that's it that's my key and I am completely happy with that I'm going back to safety
that is it. That is how you can solo the Elephant King. This is a world boss, so do come prepared. Make sure you have plenty of food and water with you. Uh, I also suggest a bedroll and obviously enough materials to repair the palisade walls. This isn't so much a beginner type of boss. It does take a bit of preparation. You could probably try and attempt it at a early level, but I would probably advise against it. That is it from me for this video, folks. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do not forget to support me on the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos here on this channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe, folks.